Hello amazing survivors, Kato Genesis here, bringing you yet another guide for Fallout 4, this time for the Wasteland Workshop expansion for Fallout 4. Rather than having its own plot or storyline, this add-on just adds more stuff. What kind of stuff? Settlement stuff. Lots of different lighting fixtures, a bunch of new decorations, concrete structures, more traps, and the primary feature of Wasteland Workshop, the ability to construct cages to capture live Wasteland creatures, gunners, and or raiders, and have them face off in arena-style combat, with each other or with your settlers. This guide in particular will be going over what you need to get started to host your very own deathmatch. And so, let's make our own Thunderdome. To begin a simple deathmatch, it doesn't even require an arena to be built. You will need two ill-tempered settlers, 15 or so bottles of alcohol, a few chems if you want it extra colorful, two combat knives, three microfusion cells, and I'm just kidding. All you really need is two settlers and two contestant platforms found in the cages section of your building menu. One red, one blue. These require just wood and steel to build. Once they are constructed, you need to only select the settlers and assign one to the red platform and one to the blue one. Once a second contestant has been assigned, shortly thereafter, as soon as they see each other, they will be at each other's throats. These quote-unquote contestants will fight to the death, unless one or both of them are essential. If the essential character does go down first, the battle will end as if someone were killed. Multiple platforms of the same color can also be placed, if you wish to have multiple settlers or companions gang up on a wasteland beast, or even it up on the other side for some team battles. So the question remains, where do we host an event of this nature? There are a lot of settlements to choose from in the Commonwealth, but hosting a full-fledged arena requires a little bit of extra space. Some of the other settlements besides Sanctuary Hills offering a lot of land include the Starlight Drive-In, the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, the Castle, and Spectacle Island. If you're looking to go big with your arenas, each of these settlements are prime candidates, but of course, only recommendations. Things get a little more costly when you want to capture live creatures. In the cages section, you will notice that there are small, medium, and large cages for their respective creatures. Placement for the cages does not matter as long as they have an exit, so you could place one dead center in your dueling area, and it'll still do its thing while you're away or sleeping. Almost all the small and medium cages will require some steel, a little bit of copper, particular bait depending on what you're catching, and a reliable source of power. The large cages require more of the same, as well as gears, and again, a reliable power source. Bait for the cages can consist of raw meat, eggs, and produce for wasteland creatures, while using bottle caps and chems, human temptations, for gunners and raiders respectively. The wait time for cage captures is anywhere from a couple of days to a week, and this time can be passed by sleeping or traveling around the commonwealth. Be warned, especially if you have multiple cages for different foes. Setting up cages like this will increase the frequency of attack. If not well guarded and power to the cages is cut, or they sustain too much damage, whatever was inside the cage will be released. And for the time we wait in capturing these things, nobody wants a premature, otherwise scheduled fight. When freeing your captures, it's a good idea to have switches hooked up to each individual cage, unless you'd like to free them all at once. Some creatures are tame when they are released, however if you wish to ensure that all of them are tame as they are released, besides the humans of course, you can install a beta wave emitter, but it comes at the high cost of requiring quite a few high tech materials as well as a rank in Wasteland Whisperer and Animal Friend. But if you intend on having Deathclaw and Yagwai defend your settlements to see that look of fear in the eyes of trespassers as they are being ripped in half, it is certainly worth the cost. And to touch on the arena construction really quick, if you don't have enough concrete, not to worry. You can get it from bags of cement found in construction sites around the commonwealth, and also scrapping all the cinder blocks you find on your settlements. But as something the size of a thunderdome demands it in bulk, Daisy's discounts in Good Neighbor and Diamond City Surplus should both have decent shipments of concrete also found in the junk section, to take back to your workshop. When you get back into the build menu and head to Structures Concrete, you are met with floors, walls, ceilings, stairs, and railings. Some of the differences compared to wood and metal is that this one includes corner pieces, half size, and double length walls, as well as pillars. Concrete walls can also sink into the ground like a foundation, so if you just wanted to wall in a particular area for your arena instead, with diagonal walls even, you can now easily do that. 
After your arena is constructed, your creatures are captured, and your contestants are ready, take all the bets you can find and let the battle begin. So what did your first arena style settlement look like? What kind of battles have you hosted? Put it up in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. If you found this guide useful, entertaining, or a little of both, do whatever it is you see fit to show that. And if you'd like more guides like this, you know what to do. Thank you very much for watching, this is Cato Genesis, and may you wander the commonwealth like you own it.